The second reading is from Genesis, the flood. The Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And every living thing that I have made, I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On that very same day, Noah and his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark. They and every wild animal of every kind and all domestic animals of every kind and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every bird of every, of every kind, every bird, every winged creature, they went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female, of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth, and the waters increased, and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the windows of the ark, and, they, and he had made and sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground but the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went and with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you, and that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Here ends the reading. Let us say together, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, 
And though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the, whole, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken, broken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow and scatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have placed in the skies the sign of your covenant with all living things. Grant that we, who are saved through water and the Spirit, may worthily offer to you our sacrifice of thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we reflect on this reading, the reading of the ancient flood, it can be difficult at times today to know what to do with this reading. And that's okay. My suggestion for meditation for this reading is to think back to that ancient world where everything that came in seemed like a judgment from the gods. The frequency of floods in a dry land careening down a riverbed and wiping out villages what else would you attribute it but to an angry God, something that must be pacified? And so here in this story, what we see is a recognition of something bigger and maybe of a change that no longer are floods, judgments, but simply nature. And nature can be cruel it can be hard, as we see going through this virus right now. But that doesn't mean it's a judgment from God. God is with us in the storm. He is the boat in which we ride, not the storm itself. Not anymore. So meditate on this. God as the boat, as the storm rages. <laughs> 